Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, when advanced imaging enters the field of complex lower limb disease management. My name is Claire and I'll be facilitating the webinar today. The webinar is scheduled to run for approximately 60 minutes and will be recorded. For the benefit of everyone, the conference line has been muted for all participants. Please note, if you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them via the questions pane on your control panel and they will be answered at the end. Dr. Deleuze is a vascular surgeon at St. Blasius Hospital in Belgium and has extended clinical experience in peripheral arterial disease treatment. He is an active researcher as a member of the FMRP group and has authored or co-authored more than 60 articles in peer-reviewed medical journals. Dr. Deleuze has delivered more than 500 lectures and has served as an organizer, moderator, commentator, or live case presenter at more than 15 national and international congresses, including VIVA, LINK, and the Verve Symposium held in Sydney November last year. You'll notice a poll question popping up on your screen in just a minute. Do you currently use fusion imaging in peripheral CTO cases? If you could just take a moment to answer the poll, I will then hand over to Dr. Deleuze. All right, thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Deleuze. I will now hand the webinar over to you. Thank you very much, uh, clear, Claire. Uh, hello. Everybody, I hope uh, my voice is clear here in this, uh, on this Belgian morning and probably uh, Australian evening. So, every, everybody is hearing me clear? Okay. Loud so, Dr. Um, so, we're going to talk today about when advanced imaging enters the field of complex lower limb disease management. Um, I don't have any potential conflict of interest according to this talk. So my big question as a vascular surgeon or better an endovascular oriented vascular surgeon is if we can transfer the enthusiasm that exists in the EVAR, TVAR, FIVAR, PAVI uh, field concerning the advanced imaging procedures that we can transfer this enthusiasm to the peripheral world. This is the question. And so with the help of uh, GE Healthcare and with our fantastic hybrid room uh, uh, with a discovery IGS 740, uh, I want to be sure that we can have also this enthusiasm in our peripheral fields. And indeed, two major points, two major advantages on this uh, hybrid room and on our discovery IGS is on one hand, in a hybrid room, as we all know, as endovascular surgeons, you need a, a lot of free space. And more particularly, I prefer a free ceiling. So you know that there are a lot of screens, a lot of surgical lights, and so on, on the ceiling. So uh, there is no space anymore for uh, advanced imaging technology. And so that's the reason that by our discovery, we have this free ceiling as it is mounted on the floor. On the other hand, we want to have, of course, a perfect imaging quality. And the best parameter to refer to this image quality, the dose versus image quality over detector efficiency in all its components, pixels, bits, noises, and all more difficult parameters for a vascular surgeon, we call it detector quantum efficiency. And I can uh, say to you, that in, in the uh, discovery IGS, it's one of the highest detector quantum efficiencies on the market nowadays. So as you can see, um, there is a free ceiling during the imaging. We have free space. We can very easily switch from a right side of the patient, a right access, to a left access. And so it just asks you a little bit of organization in your cat lab, in your hybrid room, to uh, collect all the right accesses for instance, in the morning and the left accesses in the afternoon, just to make it very easy and very comfortable to work from each side of the table. 
Okay, so let's go a little bit more in detail here. You see one of my daily challenging cases along as a day occlusion. So what we want to do, and probably, if possible, supported by our uh, uh, discovery uh, machine and our advanced imaging tools, we want to do, first of all, a correct integrate common femoral artery puncture in this case. We want to steer it directly in the SFA. We want to drill and to spin through the occlusion. Of course, we want to avoid uh, false roots or collaterals in order to avoid perforations. We want to have a clear definition and, and visualization of the reentry point uh, zone. We want to avoid geographical misses in the case we are using drug-coated balloons. We, of course, want to size in a very correct way our tools, our implants, stands, devices, and so on. And of course, last but not least, we need to see a perfect final result. So an objective judging of our final result is essential in a procedure like this. And of course, main goal is with a minimum of contrast and radiation. So in order to do this, uh, we need a perfect um, planning uh, of our procedure. And this is a big difference with earlier days, where we just looked at the uh, the, the pictures, uh, the pre-op pictures, um, and then we started the procedure. Here, nowadays, we are preparing these kind of challenging cases more uh, in detail before the procedure. You need a perfect CT angiography, and here I've mentioned I'm not a radiologist, uh, so I'm not responsible uh, for these uh, requirements, but at least you need a, a good relationship and a good co collaboration with your department of radiology to have these uh, perfect CTA uh, uh, images in advance. So uh, they use a, a protocol with an acquisition voltage of a 120 kilovolt and an intensity of 51 milliampere seconds. They use uh, an injector and they inject uh, 80 milliliters of contrast on a rate of 5 milliliters a second. And so they give a dual bolus once 100% pure contrast is 80 milliliter, and afterwards uh, they flush again uh, with 80 milliliter of physiological serum. And then the reconstruction is made with very contiguous thin slices of one millimeter. When you have these parameters, you have the perfect CT angel to start your preparing uh, job. And we use nowadays the vessel assistant assist on the VS7 of our workstation of the uh, discovery um, just to, to prepare our case. And uh, so we just create uh, sub-volumes. And as you can see here, there is a, almost in a very easy and very intuitive way, like I've mentioned, I'm a vascular surgeon. I'm not a radiologist. So in the beginning, I was completely not com comfortable with these uh, kind of extraction, automatic bone extractions, and so on. But this system is really intuitive and makes it uh, easy uh, to, in a couple of minutes, to do this uh, preparing work. So with very simple segmentation tools, you can extract the whole vascular anatomy, as you can see here uh, on the movie. And so afterwards, um, um, when you have this vascular anatomy, you can really create an easy way with the segmentation, the vessel center line. As you can see, I start with a little dot in the aorta, and then um, um, afterwards, I go with a little dot to the groin, and you see that the green line, I'm, yeah, there the, the movie is playing, the green line is really central lining the iliac axis. And then in occlusions, long occlusions, as you can see here, and as a vague uh, occlusion, we can bridge uh, the, the occlusion of the SFA from the beginning point in the groin up to the reentry zone at the popliteal site. And this uh, enables a lumen tracking. And then afterwards, as you can see here, manually, by rotating the data sets around this initial center line, we can really adapt and, and edit and fine tune the uh, lumen tracking all over the, the, the occluded uh, track of the uh, SFA. As you can notice here, based on calcifications, based on older uh, uh, marks, we can really uh, fine-tune this uh, uh, central line tracking and so prepare it for uh, the day of our uh, procedure. As you can see here, just based on calcifications, rotation, 
translation, we can really adapt and uh, re-edit the, the central line tracking up to the moment that it's perfectly adapting. So another nice thing to have this uh, central line is that you can create, just like in aneurysms, a stretched view, what you can see on the right, and based on this stretched view, we can, in a very accurate way, we can measure lesion lengths, diameters, and so on. So in order to uh, prepare our procedure and to order or to check if we have the right stent length, device length, and so on available on the shelf. If not, we can order it in advance so there are no surprises at the day of the procedure anymore. So another nice thing is, like I've mentioned, you can create uh, uh, sub-volumes, and so um, you can also do an automatic calcification segmentation. As you can see here, it can be very helpful during the overlay registration during the procedure. So we are saving all these uh, preparing work, the segmentation of the calcium, the center line registration, and so on. We are saving this work uh, when it's done after a couple of minutes. We save it in our workstation, and the day of the procedure, we can use it uh, to do our perioperative fusion. So now we switch to the day of the procedure. So how to um, fuse our images, our prepared 3D model overlay and registration, how to fuse it in our live images. Also, this is, in my opinion, one of the biggest advantages of these uh, Vessel Assist VS7. Uh, it offers you the by view registration mode. So it, may, it, it, it means that we can fuse our 3D prepared model, that we can fuse this just with the help, the support of two fluoroscopic images, as you can notice here on our uh, example. So just based on calcifications, based on some bony remarks, here in this case there was already a sheet from a crossover axis in place. So based on these, and using the accuracy, accuracy score, we can rotate, translate our two fluoroscopic images in a perfect way on the table, at table, so in order to have a, a very accurate uh, 2D, 3D fusion. And here you see this accuracy score. So once we have one fluoroscopic image, then you need uh, like to, to, to um, uh, rotate and translate the image and to create an LAO and RAO just till you are in the green score. Uh, you will see it again. This is our first fluoroscopic image. And here you see the accuracy score. So from the moment on, we reach 90%. It's green. And it means that it's sufficient to uh, create in a perfect and accurate way the 2D, 3D fusion. Of course, it's, it, it doesn't need a lot of words to say that this is limiting our radiation in a tremendous way. You don't need to prepare a 3D intraoperative scan anymore uh, to have this fusion. And then from this point on, our 3D model works in completely synchrony and synchronicity with the discovery system live images. And as you can see here, we have the center line tracking that we prepared in advance, fused in our live operating image. And I can really use it uh, to guide me through and through the, uh, a, a difficult occlusion, as you can see here. I'm guided by the blue subvolume, the blue calcifications extraction, so in order to avoid the false roots, to avoid the perforations in collaterals and so on. So easily to follow step by step these uh, uh, guidance. Here you see uh, uh, another case where we, uh, uh, where we create dots instead of a full central line over the occluded lumen. And so with my wire supported by a catheter, it was quite straightforward and easy to follow dots per dot in order to recanalize this, uh, um, uh, this occlusion. And also these dots are extremely helpful, for instance, as I've already mentioned, to avoid geographical misses. Uh, as you can see here, we know that this is a problem with drug-coated balloons. Well, when you have these dots and these numbered dots, as you can see, it's impossible to have a geographical misses. Also, this is, for me, an important tool uh, and an important advantage with earlier days. Again, here you see how correct, how, how precise uh, the center line tracking is. The final dot is just right at the, po the point of re re entry. So, also, this is for me a way 
to reduce the contrast injections, so just to be sure when we are arriving at the entry point. I don't need to inject contrast and contrast and contrast again through my uh, uh, sheet that is in place. And so the nice thing is also that we can do all these work table side. You don't need an extra technician in the, uh, uh, in the technical room. You can just, with an easy touch screen, do it yourself. Also here an example, you've heard in the introduction that we are involved in a lot of clinical studies. Well, if you can do your intraoperative table side QVA, it adds a lot of advantages and to your procedure and to the uh, 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 visualizing the, the results for a clinical study. Of course, at the end, uh, you can have the best tools you, you, you have available during your procedure. At the end, we want to judge, of course, the uh, final result. And we do this in a very easy way with the breeze uh, uh, mode of our discovery uh, system. So you can see that we, first of all, we mask the acquisition before the bolus injection. And then we are following with a table speed control system the bolus. So in order to have a, a perfect overview, automatically everything is pasted together and we have a perfect, as you can see on the right side, with just one bolus of a contrast, we have a, a perfect auto-pasted image from the common femoral up to the foot. So mainly the main advantage of all these steps during uh, this preparation and intraoperative uh, measurements and guidance is of course reducing the final radiation and the contrast. And of course, in order to make it objective, uh, you need to judge it in a quite critical way. So at the end, we always look at our uh, used contrast media. Here in difficult SFA occlusions, we use like a 25 milliliter of contrast medium. We, it's also important to look at the measured DAP, what is here in this case a 36 gray per square centimeter. And it can be interesting to benchmark yourself the radiation exposure to the published references. For instance, if we are looking to difficult task CND as a very lesion treatment, the median dose area product you find is around 46 gray per square centimeter. So as you can see, an important reduction in terms of DAP. So, and this is mainly thanks, it's not because we are handling our procedure different, it's just thanks to the hybrid room with the fusion technology. So in conclusion, I can say that the EVAR, TVAR enthusiasm about advanced imaging, we can easily transfer this to complex peripheral arterial disease management, a fully integrated workflow between planning before and the intraoperative guidance during the procedure saves time and increases confidence during complex interventions. And last but not least, our discovery IGS 740 with the advanced imaging tools like the Vessel Assist VS7 are key factors to minimizing the radiation dose and the contrast media. I thank you very much for your attention. And now I, I give the phone to Claire, uh, who is introducing the Q&A part of this webinar. Thank you, Dr. Deleuze. Before I open the floor to any questions and answers, you'll notice a new polling question on your screen. Based on what you've heard this evening, would you consider using fusion imaging in peripheral CTO cases? If you could take a moment to answer that poll, we will then move on to any questions and answers. Just a reminder, if you do have any questions, please submit them via the Q&A window on your screen. We'll leave that up for a moment while we go to our first question for Dr. Deleuze. Question, has this software reduced your procedure time, contrast load? Yeah, a, 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 a very practical question. So, of course, we have this system, this Vessel Assist uh, VS7 system available now from November on. So, of course, and as I've mentioned, I'm a vascular surgeon, so I'm not so used to work with all these kind of uh, imaging technology. So in the beginning, there was definitely a learning curve. 
And so it was adding a little bit of time uh, uh, in, in two phases. First, in terms of preparing the case, adding some more time. And on the other hand, also during the procedure, with this by view registration uh, based on the sub volumes and so on, also this was uh, initially increasing our procedural time. But probably, as some of you already um, noticed, I was doing at the end of January, so it takes just like two months extra. At the end of January, I was doing live cases from the Link Symposium, uh, all using, in all cases, using this uh, uh, technology. And so it was not adding at all more time, uh, a little bit of more preparing time, but during the procedure, was not adding time uh, in my procedural uh, timing. So uh, it takes some learning curve, but it's definitely not very cumbersome, it's easy, it's intuitive, and uh, nowadays we are using it quite often without adding more procedural time. On the other hand, contrast, we've seen, I've noticed together with our assisting nurses here, that uh, the, the, the contrast dose is reduced by more than 50% using this uh, 2D, 3D fusion technology. So the, the answer there is definitely yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Luke. The next question that has come through. Are you performing these under GA? Much movement issues with non-GA patients. Uh, excuse me. I, I missed, I missed a, a part of this question. So can you repeat, That's okay. please? I will repeat. Of course. Are you performing these oh. under GA? Much movement issues with non-GA patients. Yeah, um, this is this is a, a, a good question. So uh, just to avoid, and because we we are still in this initial phase now, it's the the fourth month we are using it. Um, we we are using general anesthesia uh, for these difficult procedures, but this is for us at least not a change in our daily practice because in the challenging, uh, demanding, long uh, a little bit longer time. Uh, asking uh, uh, procedures, long as a day occlusion, or uh, disease on multi-levels, uh, we were using uh, uh, general anesthesia just for the comfort and of the patient and of the vascular surgeon. So this was not changing our, our habit, but indeed, I, it, it, the, the, the patients in Belgium at least, and especially the patients with these challenging lesions, are not always the most cooperative uh, patients. So if they are not fixed very well, if they are moving a lot, of course, then you will have problems with this uh, 2D, 3D fusion uh, uh, technology. So we use general anesthesia, except, of course, for the critical limp ischemia patients, where some of them, they don't tolerate the general anesthesia. And so uh, we need to work on local, with local anesthesia, what in some cases uh, really reduce the efficacy of uh, the use of this technology. Great, thank you for that. I've got another question come through. Would you say that you have moved patients to the minimally invasive approach that you would have previously done surgically? And if yes, which patients are more suited to MIS now that you have vessel assist? Um, to be very honest, um, this technology didn't change anything in my indication for minimal invasive surgery. So uh, I was already doing before 90% uh, or more of my procedures, also challenging procedures in an endovascular way. So I'm still doing the same amount of patients after the introduction of this technology. The major advantage here is uh, in terms of reduction of uh, radiation and um, and also of uh, um, contrast dose, what is probably the most important. And of course, um, this is something where I don't have a clear view, but there is at least a trend to see that I can also reduce the uh, percentage, the rate of complications. So in earlier days, I had seen more perforations, for instance, in these difficult SFV recanalizations than now, as I'm guided by this uh, center line, this fuse, the center line. So, uh, I, but uh, I don't have a, 
an objective parameter for this. We plan together with the uh, General Electric Healthcare, we plan to set up a kind of a prospective registry just uh, to see if we really can reduce also beside the radiation and contrast where I'm already convinced now that we can also reduce the rate of complications, for instance, perforations with the introduction of these technologies. Thank you for that, Dr. Deleuze. Another question we've got that's come through. Prior to this new technology, were your patients having a routine pre-op CTA? Yeah, if, if, if the kidney function, if the renal function is uh, not a contraindication for this, uh, we routinely offer a CT angiography. So the first screening of our patients is a clinical one and a duplex ultrasound uh, screening. Once we have the diagnosis of uh, arterial disease, we routinely, with, as I've mentioned, the exception of uh, contraindications like uh, renal function impairment, um, we routinely do this uh, CT angio. Um, but of course, like in CLI patients, diabetic patients, we see some of them with some uh, borderline kidney function. In these cases, we try to avoid the CT angio in advance. Thank you, Dr. Deleuze. That concludes the questions for today. I would like to thank you all for joining us today, and thank you again to Dr. Deleuze for the presentation. We hope you all enjoy the remainder of your day. Thank you. Thank you.